let's look at the relationship between throughput, bandwidth and data rate. And we're going to take a typical communication system like the 802.11a OFDM based system. We'll use that as our example. So here I've drawn the diagram of what happens to the data and if we start at the middle here's the channel and to modulate our signal, our data across the channel, we have OFDM with a cyclic prefix, that's CP. And for more information on OFDM and cyclic prefix, you can see the links below this video. We also have forward error correction, so this is to overcome for errors on the channel. Of course, uh, higher layers, we have a uh, MAC layer for dealing with contention between different users, an ARQ layer uh, for looking for requesting uh, retransmissions of packets if they come in error, an IP layer and a TCP layer which also requests re-requests TPC packets if they are received uh, over here in error. Uh, so let's think about what we have here for our, um, our 802.11a system. Well, let's look at some typical numbers. So let's say we have, uh, well, typically we have 20 megahertz bandwidth channels. Uh, so that's 20 megahertz bandwidth channels, and we have 64 sub-channels in our OFDM system in 802.11a. So there's 64 sub-carriers. So this equals 312.5 kilohertz per sub-carrier. Okay, and what does that mean? That means that we can be sending a symbol every time we send an OFDM symbol. Uh, how long does it take for us to send that symbol? Well, it's the symbol duration is 1 divided by 312.5 kilohertz gives us our symbol duration of 3.2 microseconds. But we add to that a cyclic prefix of 0.8 microseconds. So this is the cyclic prefix. Okay, so the overall, the symbol rate here, we call this the symbol rate, uh, rate is one symbol every four microseconds. Okay, so this is our symbol rate in 802.11a OFDM with 20 megahertz channel and 64 sub-channels. Well, what's our, what we call our data rate? What's our data rate? Well, first of all, let's just uh, realize that this thing here is, well, we're talking about here is what we're going to be calling the data rate. That's where the data rate is in this system. After the forward error correction, we call this the coded bit rate because we're going to add in extra bits for redundancy. That's what happens in forward error correction coding. And then those bits are the ones that are put into the OFDM modulator. So that's an important distinction to know about. Okay, so what about this data rate here? Well, this data rate, it's going to equal uh, typically, or the maximum we have in this system is we're going to use 64 QAM, 64 QAM, so that is six bits per, uh, per modulation format. We're going to use, out of the 64 subchannels, there are typically 48 that are used for data, so there's 48 subchannels used for data. Uh, the forward error correction is a three-quarter rate code in uh, typically. So that means for every three of these bits here, we're going to be putting four bits into our OFDM modulator. And of course, this is for uh, this one, the symbol rate of one over four microseconds, and this equals 54 megabits per second. So when you see OFDM, uh, when you see Wi-Fi 802.11a advertised at a maximum data rate of 54 megabits per second, this is how it comes about and that's what it means. At this point here, you're going to, that's what the data rate is there. These ones and zeros that come out of the Mac, uh, that's the rate of those. Now that takes into account the cyclic prefix. Uh, which is uh, between the OFDM symbols, uh, but it doesn't take into account all the headers. So these uh, layers of the protocol stack, they all add headers. So when we're thinking about what's the difference between our data rate and our throughput, uh, then we need to take these headers into account. This is the first thing that we need to take into account. So out of the topic of this video, the throughput, the bandwidth and the data rate, we've talked about the bandwidth, that's 20 megahertz bandwidth of channels, the width of the frequency. We've now got the data rate, 
here, which is the 54 megabits per second. But what we're really interested in is the overall throughput. And what is that? So let's write down a formula for the overall throughput down here. So we've got here throughput PUT equals, and I'm going to write over here the data rate, and then there's going to be factors that we're multiplying by. So this is our data rate here. This is the, for example, the 54 megabit per second. So this is the rate of these symbols here, these data here. Okay, so first of all, we know that we've got, uh, as I've said, we've got all these headers. So we have to multiply our data rate by the number of data bits which correspond to data divided by the number of correspond the number of bits that correspond to data plus the number of bits that correspond to headers. Okay, so this is a factor that is we need to multiply that data rate by that data rate here. We need to multiply it by this ratio here because not all of the data coming down here is actual data from our application, our video or our voice channel, whatever. Some of it is the headers. So they've got that factor here. But we also have uh, three other factors. Okay, so the first one of those factors, what are those three factors? Uh, the first factor is the fact that at the Mac layer, other contention would be happening. So some of these packets, when they get sent into the channel, other users are also trying to send packets into the channel and there are collisions. So the Mac layer over here, it decodes these the packets that it receives, de decodes the forward error correction, and then it checks the headers. So this checks the header. And, and if it checks the header and it finds out that the header is not what it's expecting for a valid header, then it sends a signal back and says that packet needs to be resent. Okay, so we're going to have a factor here that says not all of the uh, uh, packets that get sent, get, or not all of the OFDM symbols that get sent come through successfully. A certain proportion of them need to be resent. So we're going to have one minus the, uh, the MAC contention rate. So this is the MAC uh, contention, I'll, I'll call it MAC cont rate. So what rate do those packets need to be resubmitted at? You do one minus that, and those are the ones that get through fine. Okay, so this is because of other users and, and contention. That's what has caused that factor. There's another factor then at the ARQ. Let's say the header is fine, then it sends it up the layer to the ARQ, and the ARQ looks to see whether the uh, the packet makes sense. So whether it's whether the well not just makes sense, it looks to see whether the forward error correction uh, matches with what it should, uh, so that all the data is correct. So now we've got one minus the ARQ, and if it doesn't, then it asks for the packet to be resent. So this is the ARQ retransmission, retransmission rate uh, for, um, for the whole packet needing to be resent because it's in error. This one here, the Mac asked for it to resent because a collision happened and the header was, was um, collided with another, or the whole packet collided but the header was unable to be read. The ARQ asked for retransmissions even if there was no collision, it asked for it because there were errors in the packet. So this is errors uh, in the packet, in the packet. Uh, we ask for retransmissions. And then, of course, at the TCP layer, there's the same, and that's for more overall. So this is from this is general from channel uh, condition that we uh, uh, channel condition that we ask for the ARQ to be retransmitted. Okay, so the ARQ is is generally because of the channel condition, but the MAC is because of other users colliding. Uh, the channel condition means you're far away from the from the access point, or uh, the uh, there's noise in your receiver, uh, and uh, so this one here is the TCP retransmission rate, uh, and this is more of an overall rate higher up the protocol stack. Okay, so the throughput is a formula which which takes the data rate and then looks at the fact that not all the data is data; some of it is headers. And then some of the packets need to be retransmitted because of users colliding, the packets colliding from other users. 
the channel condition uh, not being uh, as good as it could be and this error correction code maybe not overcoming all the errors that happen. So when you decode, there are still errors. That, that's fixed up at the ARQ level. And then the TCP, when you put all those frames together, uh, do they give you back the application TCP packet that you uh, uh, that that uh, matches with the with the uh, um, the parity. Uh, okay, so this throughput here can take your 54 megabits per second, and it can come typically down to values in the order of 20 megabits per second, for example, or even less, or sometimes more. Uh, but certainly, the throughput is. We can now see the throughput and the data rate are related by all of these other factors which means that the overall throughput you end up getting is not going to be the 54 megabits per second uh, that is advertised as the maximum data rate. Okay, don't forget to like uh, this video if you uh, found it useful. It helps others to find the video uh, and subscribe to the channel for more videos. And check the links below for links to related videos explaining things such as OFDM and the cyclic prefix.